guys welcome back to my channel in today's video we are going to be finishing up this caribou I was working on in colored pencil and we're also going to be talking a little bit about my 2018 art resolutions for this year so before we get too far into this um, I had posted a video the other week um, showing you how to do this blurry background that I'm working on. It's about 20 minutes long, so we're not going to spend too much time on the background in this video. So I will have a card pop up and you can check that video out if you want to know more about how I made this blurry background. Also all the supplies I will be using will be listed below in the video description. Okay, so let's jump right in here, and um, right now I'm lightly working on the background with a light hand. I'm using an assortment of blues and a little bit of grays to kind of achieve this blurred out background look. I am laying down the color with a very light hand, and I'm going to be working with probably about four or five layers of colored pencil on the paper before I blend out with paint thinner. So as I'm working on this, I'm going to go ahead and talk about my 2018 art resolutions for this year. I have two big personal projects that I'm working on that I'm not going to officially tell you what they are just yet um, because I haven't officially decided on how I want to go about completing these just yet. It's something that I'm working on and I just, you know, I have a year to get it done, but um, a lot of my art pieces will be involved in the project, so I will give you more information on that when I get a more solid foundation as to what I want to do and officially make a decision on how I want to go about doing that. And so jumping right in to my 2018 art resolutions, um, the first resolution I have is I want to fill up a sketchbook. That is one of my goals. And I think I'm going to do it in colored pencil, uh, mostly in my toned gray sketchbook. And I want to do a lot of colored pencil studies, like eyes, insects, you know, small things like paws, noses, just to kind of really study these things. And, you know, like a lot of this stuff will be able to make my final bigger art pieces a lot better. So I think that would be um, a really good resolution to have. And my second New Year's resolution for my artwork is to experiment with different mediums. Um, I'd really like to jump back into acrylic paint. Um, it turns out I've been doing it kind of backwards for all the years that I've been doing it. And um, I bought some new acrylic paints and I bought some watercolor paints. I bought a whole bunch of stuff to try out and experiment with and I really want to use a lot of that as kind of like an underbase for my colored pencil pieces so I don't run through these colored pencils so much and it will save time in my editing because um, this whole piece got I think it took me 18 to 20 hours of footage and I kept running out of room on my SD cards and I kept running out of room on my computer so to kind of save SD card space and to make this stuff a little bit better and easier to edit, um, I bought some watercolors and markers and stuff to use as a base for my colored pencil pieces, so I'm really excited to try that out. <laughs> and um, my last resolution for 2018 is to spend a little bit more time on my composition and planning of my pieces. And I also kind of want to plan out my colors a little bit better. So I will be studying um, color theory quite a bit this year and just experimenting. And, um, you know, lastly, I like I'm really searching for my style, but not searching too hard. I'm hoping that it finds me sometime this year. Um, I'm not even sure if I have a style yet. Um, you know, it's one of those things that artists just tend to kind of stress about. I'm not stressing about it, but I'm hoping my style finds me at some point this year. Um, if you follow me on Instagram, you will also see that I have gotten um, a new camera. So I'm going to be learning how to use that one because I've been using the Yi 4K for like ever. And it's like, if, if you can see here, it's very fish-eyed. 
like a lens, like it's wide angle, but you feel like you're in a circular thing and it's just silly. And like right now, in a second, you will see um, at the very end of this video, I ran out of room on my SD card. So you will see the last four minutes or so um, on my phone. And for some reason, I like the way the phone turned out better than that. So I'm really excited to use my new camcorder. And also I will be hopefully finishing up my new studio space and officially getting into there so I can get more comfortable and have more room. So I'm really excited to get in there. Okay, so if you want to go ahead and watch the blurry background video before you come back to this one, that's fine. But as of right now, we are starting on the antlers on this caribou. And I am taking my black polychromos and filling in where all my darks are going to go. With a very light hand, I'm, I'm working in the direction that my reference photo is telling me to go. Like it's not fur, but it's not something that I really want to work in little circles on because there's a lot of um, texture in these antlers. They're really, um, they're at the furry stage. I don't know if you know, you know how um, the baby deer, and when they first get their antlers, they're fuzzy. They're, they seem really fuzzy in this photo. So I'm trying to keep them really soft but also really defined. So I'm going to be working in a lot of light layers on this and I'm going to fill in my darks first and leaving the space. I'm kind of reserving the white and the light areas so I don't get them too dark. And uh, speaking of reference photos, this reference photo does come from Pixabay. Um, however, I used an app called Enlight to kind of um, edit it and make it more blue like I really wanted it to be very blue and very magical like he was a reindeer and just kind of like up in the North Pole I know this is late this is from I started this early December and because of my daughter's health issues I kind of really had to kind of postpone finishing this piece so this whole piece has been kind of a nightmare for me and not really good memory wise um, but she is doing much better and you know with the hubbub of christmas and them being off for two weeks i finally finished it and we are talking about it now so if you're wondering what happened to me that's what happened um so i don't really anticipate more problems um going further i'm gonna definitely have to kind of batch shoot some of this stuff so you guys don't miss a video or so I don't miss the video for you guys. Um, that is another thing that I really want to do is to get on a schedule this year for posting videos. Um, but it's been a little hard with my daughter's health issues to kind of pay attention to art when I need to pay attention to her. So that's what happened to me if you were wondering. Um, all right, so back to the tutorial here. So as I said, it's very blue and I edited it that way. I wanted it to be like I wanted to experiment with color. So I'm keeping a very light hand while I'm doing this again. And I am just working with blues and grays and then a little bit of black on this piece. And then I ended up adding a little bit of purple to kind of make him pop out from the background. Um, it felt like it was um, a little too mid range. So I did have to add a little bit of purple into uh, the caribou to get him to kind of stand out from the background and really up my contrast to make it feel like he was very real. Okay, so moving on. Um, and really quickly, I want to just note that um, though this piece was like a nightmare for me to finish, I'm very glad that I finished it. That was something that I decided that I was going to do when I started YouTube is I was going to finish every piece. That's something that I had trouble with very much in the past. If you've seen my old sketchbook tour video, you will see that absolutely nothing is finished. And I really like that I finished this piece. I highly recommend you finish every piece that you start. Even if it doesn't look fantastic, it will you will learn something from it. And I also did a video on this and I will have a card pop up here and you can check that out. And moving on back to the antlers and I'm starting on the other portion of them. And I'm doing the same thing. I'm 
putting in my uh, my darks where the darks go and reserving the white or reserving the light areas for the highlights and these antlers are not done by any means I'm just basically getting everything blocked in at this point getting the darks where I want the darks to go and the lights where I want the lights to go um, and right now I'm adding the purple so it feels like it will well I was adding the purple but now there's different colors there um, in the purple, I felt like it really did help it to pop out from the background because the background was so blue as well. But as I said, these antlers are nowhere near finished. I'm going to block everything in and then go back in and start with the antlers again. And I'm working on the actual caribou right now, and I'm doing the same thing. I'm putting the darks where I want the darks to go. I'm using that black polychromos pencil and just very lightly putting the darks in so I can see where everything else needs to go. I normally don't work like this. I normally work in little sections by little sections, but I found that adding the darks in first, it really helps put the rest of the piece in, in, um, in motion for me. Like I feel like it's a lot easier to kind of judge everything else, like judge all the values when you have the darks in there. And now because I'm actually working on the actual caribou, I am using my pencil strokes in the direction that the fur is going. So I am paying very close attention to my reference photo for this just because otherwise it's going to look wonky if I take, take it to my own imagination and not pay attention. So I'm really paying attention to where the dark fur is, where the light fur is, where the highlights are, where the shadows are, and really getting that fur texture in there and moving my pencil in the direction that the fur is go going in. And now I'm adding, um, I'm adding some of the French grays into the fur. I found they're they're a little bit more brown in the luminance set, in the luminance colored pencil set. Um, and so I really liked the way the French grays made the fur look in uh, the caribou down where I'm working right now. I really like that section of the fur when it's done. And then pulling in some of the blues into the fur because I want him to look like he's actually in the piece and not just on top of the background so I have to pull those background colors into the animal like I did with the antlers and I will be adding a little bit of purple um, into the blue areas on the caribou's fur in here to make him pop out from the background too because like I said he looked very flat after I was done with the first layer of layers and it really needed some purple and then upping the contrast really helped it pop out from the background. So I'm just going to continue this in a bunch of light layers and just keep working and keep building up those darks and lights and just paying attention to which way the fur is going. If you um if you're going for realism and you're not working from a photo, the odds of you getting anything looking realistic are slim to none. You really need, like, you think you know in your head how something is supposed to look, but if you're not paying attention to actually what it really does look like, then it's just not going to look realistic. So I highly recommend you do get a royalty-free reference photo. Don't, especially if you're selling your art. Even if you're not, you might as well just get into a good habit of using royalty-free photos. Um, you can do anything from, there's a couple, paintmyphoto.com and then pixabay.com. And Pixabay is really great because they have an app, so you can just search through it while you're on your phone, save it to your camera roll for a later date. I love Pixabay. And another one, this one is paid. And that one is um, Story Blocks. Used to be Shutterstock. No, used to be um, Graphic Stock. And theirs is like a paid membership. I think it's like $100 for a year. And I'm not really quite ready to spend that kind of money just yet. And I also want to um, practice taking some of my own reference photos. So there's that. And then there's WildlifeReferencePhotos.com, which is really great. And I believe Jason Morgan actually does a lot. That's well, and those three are paid. You would have to pay for those. But um, wildlifereferencephotos.com, it's like $5 per photo, so it's not too bad. Or you can get 
five photos for $10, which I think is a great deal. So I did do that before. Okay, back to the tutorial. So now that all of my layers are on, and I have like four or five layers of on there, and I every time I'm using a paintbrush on this piece, I am using um, paint thinner to blend out my colors. And if you haven't tried this method of blending colored pencil yet, it is a game changer. I hated colored pencil before I found this technique. Um, and if you're looking for any kind of more videos like this, um, Lisa from La Cree Fine Art has like 80 colored pencil videos. Uh, I will leave a link to her channel in the video description. And I also recommend listening to the colored pencil podcast. It's totally free and they have over a hundred episodes and they're all great. I love them so much. I've learned so much from, about colored pencil from those two things. And I also recommend getting the colored pencil Bible by Eleona Nicholson. It, you know, you have it right in front of your face and it's kind of like a step-by-step -step how to blend, what materials to use. It's just chock full of great information. I really like that book. Okay. So as I said, um, everything is officially blocked in, everything's blended out, and this is me. I just finished upping the contrast and defining everything in the antlers, and I'm gonna come down and do the same thing into the actual caribou. I'm really making sure my, my shadows here are as deep as they need to be. And I'm just working in the same direction that the fur is going, and just upping my contrast, just really paying attention to where those darks need to go and where the lights need to go and really, really take your time with colored pencil, you guys. It's not a fast medium at all, like not even close. Oh, apparently now I'm gonna come up and do the antlers. I thought we already did that. But <laughs> you will be able to see the difference, like from the first couple layers to the last couple, like it just looks so much better when you really take your time and really make it look good. Yeah, okay. So now we are up in here and I'm really defining the shadows and the antlers. Adding the blues. And that's another thing too, is that when you're working with black for shadows, if you leave it straight black, it's going to look very flat. And that's another tip that I really got from the Colored Pencil Podcast and Lisa Clow from La Cree Fine Art, is when you are doing shadows and you're working with a black colored pencil, when you layer other colors on top of the black, it makes it look so much deeper. Like, I don't even know how it's possible, but when you add blues and purples and magentas to black, to really kind of, it really deepens the darkness of it. Um, it's really amazing and I found that, that that alone has been one of the things that just really was a great tip for me and something that I wasn't getting before. So I highly recommend uh, layering other colors on top of your blacks to keep them from make, to keep it from looking flat. It really gives it a lot of depth and I highly recommend using that method. Sorry guys, apparently it's very hard for me to talk today. And I'm having so many computer issues with all of this footage. There's just so much footage, so I just, I really don't have it in me to go back and make sure my words are absolutely perfect, because in all honesty, I'm a person and I'm not a teacher. Like, I'm just basically showing you how I got this look. So, like, for me to go back and re-edit everything to sound like a professor just seems ridiculous to me. So, hopefully I'm coming at you more as a friend giving you friendly advice versus any kind of do what I say kind of thing. So I really hope you don't think anything like that when you are watching my videos. But so back to this, what I'm doing now is I'm adding, I'm really darkening up the face and I found the face was the most challenging piece of this piece for me because there was something wrong with his eye in the beginning. So I had to um, adjust it with a pencil before I went back in and actually colored it. So you will see me kind of avoid that area until the very end. <laughs> it will be the last thing I do. <clears throat> the eye anyway. <clears throat> so another thing to note is that though when you think something is white, you want to leave it straight white. But in all honesty, 
it's usually not going to be straight white because white reflects color and it picks up color. So a lot of it, like a lot of this fur up here in the front, like I'm leaving the very front front a lot of white because that's where my highlights are gonna go. There's two areas that are only gonna be straight white on here. You wanna save your white white for the highlights. Most of the other whites are going to be grays and any other color that it's picking up. So for example, in this one, it's a lot of light gray and a lot of light blue in that area up kind of like under his ear. And you wanna save your white whites for your highlights. Otherwise, it's not gonna look very realistic. And what makes it look white, like the parts that I have colored gray under there, what makes it look brighter is the contrast next to it. So that's, you know what I mean? Like contrast is very, very important to learn. And that's really what I was focusing on on this piece was that I, want, I picked a lot of blue tones because I really wanted to focus on my contrast because apparently the better your contrast is, the better your piece will look. Okay, so now I am coming in with the Touch Up Texture in Titanium White from brushandpencil.com and I'm using a liner brush to add in my highlights. Now, I really, really like this product. It's archival and it's made for colored pencil and in a few minutes you are gonna see why this is something that I prefer to use on my colored pencil pieces versus white acrylic paint or gel pens. And I do use gel pens. I will be using them in my colored pencil sketchbook, but I won't be using that on my final pieces unless I'm just gonna sell prints of that. Because when I make the snow, I really make a huge mistake on this. And it's okay when I'm using this because if you make a mistake with this, this is made for colored pencil. If you get something too white or too big or whatever, you can take a colored pencil and go over it and nothing's affected whatsoever. So that's why I really prefer this product for colored pencil pieces. And I actually did a tutorial on this and I will have a card pop, pop up here and you can check that out. Well, apparently I need some more coffee because words are a little too hard for me this morning. So anyway, so I'm still working with that liner brush and I am just slowly adding in my highlights here. And I'm really paying attention to the reference photo for this because it, it's really easy to get carried away with anything when you're doing highlights. You just want to keep going and make it look more pretty and it's, it's easy to overdo it with this product so I don't recommend making a whole gigantic batch but I really love it and in just a second you are going to see exactly why I love this product for colored pencil because had I used acrylic paint instead of this I would have really really ruined my piece and I would have been sad especially because it was so many hours of work it would have made me cry honestly <laughs> I'm not even gonna lie um, but as you can see, I'm just still adding my highlights where they need to go and brightening up some areas. And then I'm going to mix a little bit more. And see right here, I'm fixing that the highlight was too big on his ear. So I was able to take a colored pencil and go right on top of that with no, no problem whatsoever. Taking some black and going in between. And I'm sorry, I'm working off camera a little bit here because I'm on my phone and um, well, Let's be honest, I ran out of room on my SD card, so I was using my phone. And you can see like, I just, some areas I made it too dark, so I had to use the touch up texture and titanium white to lighten the area so I could put lighter blues instead of the darker blues on there. Okay, and now I am making the snow and you will see that some of these drops are too large and I'm sad. So <laughs> I'm gonna show you what's gonna happen. And I almost cried, but then I remembered, oh yeah, wait, I'm using the colored pencil thing, so I can just go ahead and, yep, see, right there, totally screwed it up. If I was using acrylic paint, I think I would be totally screwed <laughs> on this piece. But I'm not going to panic because, hey, look, I can color right on top of that with colored pencil because this product is made for colored pencil. So thank you, Aliona Nicholson, for making this product. And... I'm just going to finish working on this antler here and 
see how easy it is to cover up it's just I highly recommend this product for using for making highlights in your colored pencil pieces because it's really easy to get carried away with it and as you can see you can mess up on something that you spent hours on and just want to cry after but at least when you're using this it doesn't it's not the end of the world and you can just color on top of it and fix it so that is the one thing I do really like about the product sometimes it's a little rough to mix it um, this time around I did um, <clears throat> really smush the titanium white and then added the touch-up texture to it and I found that worked out a lot better all right well I'm just gonna stop talking now anyway that is the finished product I'm really proud of this piece I hope you guys enjoyed this video make sure you subscribe so you don't miss anything and make sure you hit that bell icon so you don't miss anything at all and you get notified of whenever I upload new videos if you like this video make sure you give it a thumbs up and I will see you guys in the next one bye